Welcome once more to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. In the first two presentations in this series, we defined what we mean by elasticity and we showed how you could use the own price elasticity of demand to make predictions about government policy. The policy we looked at was a price support scheme for farmers. In this presentation, we're going to show how to actually calculate the own price elasticity of demand, working from data about the demand curve. First, a couple of reminders. An elasticity is the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in something else. So the own price elasticity of demand for a good is simply the percentage change in the quantity demanded of that product divided by the percentage change in the price of the same product. And here's our formula. Up the top of the fraction we have the percentage change in the quantity demanded. The product that we're looking at is product I and the little d up here refers to quantity demanded. Down the bottom of the fraction we have the percentage change in the price Again, it's the price of good I. So we've got the same good in terms of the change in quantity and in terms of the change in price. So this formula is simply the own price elasticity of demand for good I. Let's now apply this to a simple market. I'm going to pick the market for eggs because I may as well. We've got the quantity of eggs down on the horizontal axis. We've got the price of eggs up on the vertical axis. And we're going to start with a price of $2.40 and 10,000 dozen eggs being demanded. We're only going to look at the demand curve here because we're looking at the own price elasticity of demand. Now, to work out the own price elasticity of demand, we need a percentage change in quantity and a percentage change in price. So let's put a change in price in here and look at the change in the quantity demanded when the price changes. Let's suppose that the price goes up from $2.40 up to $3. That leads to a reduction in the quantity of eggs that people would like to buy from 10,000 eggs down to 7,000 eggs. So, our percentage change in quantity, well, quantity has fallen by 3,000 from our initial level of 10,000, so that's 3 divided by 10, a 30% change in quantity demanded. Our price has gone up by 60 cents from the original level of $2.40, so that's a 25% increase in price. So, the own price elasticity of demand for this demand curve at the price of $2.40 when 10,000 dozen eggs are demanded is given by the percentage change in quantity, 30% divided by the percentage change in price, 25%. So that gives an own price elasticity of minus 1.2. Remember that we've got the minus sign in here reflecting that quantity has fallen when the price has risen, although often economists leave the minus sign off. Notice also from last time that this elasticity in absolute value terms or without the minus sign is greater than 1, so this says we have an elastic demand curve for eggs. Notice that we said that the elasticity of demand was minus 1.2 at the price of $2.40 and the quantity of 10,000 dozen eggs. Even though we've got a straight line demand curve as drawn here, the elasticity of demand is going to change at different points on that demand curve. To see this, let's just do the reverse price change. Let's imagine that we start off with a price of eggs of $3 a dozen and 7,000 dozen eggs being demanded. And we drop the price now by 60 cents down to $2.40 and that leads to a 3,000 increase in quantity demanded. What's our elasticity now? Well, we've had an increase in quantity of 3,000 divided by 7,000. So that's about a 43% percentage change in quantity. The price has fallen by 60 cents. 60 cents is 
of $3. So quantity has gone up by 43%. Price has gone down by 20%. So our elasticity of demand is 43% divided by 20%. That gives an own price elasticity of demand of minus 2.15. So the own price elasticity of demand on our demand curve for eggs at a price of $3 and a quantity of 7,000 eggs demanded is given by minus 2.15. Again, the minus sign reflecting that as the price falls, quantity rises. A couple of points to note here. Firstly, note that the elasticity of demand at the price of $3 is significantly different from the elasticity of demand at a price of $2.40, even though this is a straight line or a linear demand curve. That's a general result for demand curves. For most demand curves, the elasticity of demand will change as we move along the demand curve. So when you're talking about the elasticity of demand, you have to talk about a specific point on the demand curve. The elasticity of demand at a price of $3 will be different to the elasticity of demand at a price of $2.40. The second point is that our measures here that we've got from the data of the demand curve are actually estimates of the own price elasticity of demand. The actual formula for the own price elasticity of demand is given here on this slide. If you know some calculus, this isn't too hard. Effectively, this left-hand bit is 1 over the slope of the demand curve at the point, and the right-hand term is just the price divided by the quantity at that point. And this is the formula for the exact own price elasticity of demand of a demand curve at a particular price-quantity combination. But whenever we go out and use real data, we're not going to have this left-hand term, the exact slope, and so we're going to have to approximate this formula, and that's what our percentage change in quantity divided by our percentage change in price actually does. So we're always going to end up with an approximation or an estimate of the own price elasticity of demand. Once you realise that what we're actually doing is trying to get an approximation of the own price elasticity of demand at a point on the demand curve, then you can recognise that we can get that estimate or that approximation in a number of ways. We can look at a small price increase, a small price decrease, or a change in price around the particular point that we care about. Now, from my perspective, I don't mind which of these approaches you use. However, obviously, if your lecturer in your course tells you to use a particular one of these approaches, please do so. So, let's see how we'd run through each of these methods to estimate the own price elasticity of demand for eggs at a price of $2.40 per dozen eggs when 10,000 dozen eggs are demanded. We can look at a small price increase from, say, $2.40 to $3. That's an increase of $0.60 cents or 25%. That results in a reduction in the quantity of eggs demanded from 10,000 to 7,000, so a reduction of 3,000, which is 30%. That leads to an estimate of the own price elasticity, percentage change in quantity, 30% divided by the percentage change in price, 25%. Our estimate is 1.2, or more correctly, negative 1.2. Alternatively, starting at $2.40, we can look at a small price decrease of, say, 40 cents, or around 17%. That leads to an increase in quantity from 10,000 to 12,000, so that's an increase of 2,000 or 20%. So our estimate of the own price elasticity, percentage change in quantity 20, divided by percentage change in price 17, that gives our estimate of 1.18 or negative 1.18 if you want to make sure you get the sign right. Another way we can estimate the elasticity of demand at our point 
price of 240, quantity of 10,000, is to use a range around the point of interest. So here I've got a range. I'm going to look at the range on price that runs from $2 to $3. At $3, the quantity demanded is 7,000. At $2, the quantity demanded is 12,000. So that's the range of quantity that I'm going to be looking at. So our percentage change in quantity is 12 minus 7 which is 5,000, divided by 10,000, which is just 50%. And our change in price is $3 minus $2. $3 minus $2 is $1 change, divided by 240, that's 42%. So using this method, percentage change in price over percentage change in quantity is 50 divided by 42 is 1.19, is our estimate of the own price elasticity. You could think up lots of other ways to estimate the own price elasticity at this point on the demand curve. For example, some lecturers will insist that if you use this range method, then it has to be symmetric around $2.40. So they would require, say, a price of $2 and a price of $2.80, or a price of, if you're going up to $3, $1.80 and $3, so that you have 60 cents movement on either side in that case. Again, you, you understand that what we're doing here is coming up with an approximation. None of these ways is perfect. None of these ways is correct. They're all coming up with an estimate of the true value. The true value for the own price elasticity of demand, of course, is given by this formula here. But you can only use this formula if you know the exact equation for the demand curve. Now, in our simple example here, you could work that out because our demand curve is a straight line. And you might want to do this if you're happy dealing with a bit of calculus. But more generally, in the real world, when you're dealing with estimates of demand curves, you won't know the exact equation. And so you're going to have to deal with the sort of imprecision that we've seen in this presentation. Recognise that you're making an estimate and don't stress about the fact that your estimate is not perfect. Finally, some of you will have noticed that this first part of our elasticity formula is really just one on the slope of the inverse demand curve. And a question that often comes up from first year students is, why do we use this elasticity formula that we have here rather than just using the measure of the slope of the demand curve? Well. That's what we're going to turn to next, and I'm going to explain why elasticity is a better measure than using the slope of the demand curve.